This is working. Let's see if I can get the camera centered a bit more as well. How you all doing? Let's see who's lurking. I should really wait for the audio and video confirmation to be coming through. Hey, so apparently I'm live, which is a good start. My cursor is also completely fucked off, which is a less good start. Um, good evening, good evening, good evening. Let's see. So, can someone just give me the audio and video is okay? It seems like it is, given your shouting. But, uh, let's just get that confirmed before I dive any, in, in, any further. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I did set Twitch to be a bit more on the serious lag on your side. Okay, everything's great. Bug number 13. Video okay. Double audio? Only on your side. Okay, so we got three people in three completely <laughs> different results. Double audio for Jace. That's good to know. Um, oh. That's good to know. Let's try that. How is that? Is that a little less doubled now? Well, we'll get the double audio fixed first. Um, I'm getting one in sync audio and one. Okay, so that's fixed it. Excellent. All right. Okay, so yes, that was the. Apparently, the desktop audio was on. I was having to do some streams around and recording over the course of the Kickstarter, so every setting's been fucked up. Um, Echo is a little quiet. I mean, meaning there's a quiet echo, or there's normally an echo, and it's now quiet. Um, okay, so if we are back in business. Let's just say hello to whoever's here today. Um, Akla Dakla. Hello, bug number 13. Darius, Jace, Shamara, and uh, Wind Up Boy. Good to have you here. Um, yes, the elephant in the room. We do have a very successful Kickstarter. It's It's been crazy so yeah we're up at what 150 160 percent funded now which is amazing we're still we're expecting two more significant bumps to that before the end of the campaign um so yeah i've got a job which is really nice so no cvs for me for now um and yeah we've just got to make a thing really fast it's a it's a lot of fun um yeah there is a lot to do uh if you've seen the video, uh, you'll have seen the other two chaps I'm kind of primarily working with, uh, Rhea and Jason. Uh, Rhea is currently getting a rest before we start the uh, gone off on holiday to relax a bit before we start the madness. So there's not too much news right now. I'm playing around a lot with Unity shaders and kind of getting used to that thing. I am very, very accustomed to just doing GLSL through Lisp. <laughs> so it's like remapping everything onto other people's uh, frameworks is taking a little bit of time, but nothing nothing significant. I'm taking it very casually. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for uh, yeah bringing that up. It's going rather well. Um, right. So today, today I should drop you some links and I should get myself set up. You'd think... Oh, this guy's had a lot of time to get his shit in, in order since the uh, last time we dumped one of these. Everything should be really tight and together. No, not at all. In fact, I'm even less organized than normal, which is uh, the, the kind of respect that I bring <laughs> to these streams. Right, so I went as far as to Google the, uh, the topic and then pick the first result, because again, in-depth research. And what I liked about this was there was some code that we can um, we can bodge from and a link to an article. So this is going to be the one we're going to be working from. So today we're going to go through this and see if we can convert that code and if we get anything sensible out. For some reason as well, we've had a minor regression, as you can see here. But what you can probably see is just blackness, right? It's probably just goes, there is some color, kind of bronzy kind of colored thing, and then it goes straight to black. It's not actually like that at all. It's It's got a, a shadow here, there's some ambient light, and it is very different from the background color. That is super annoying to me because we had this fixed like the other week, and now it's not again. And as far as I can tell, all the settings are the same. Um, I'm still using uh, full color space and all that kind of thing. So I have no idea what's happened there. That's super annoying. But luckily for this one, we don't really need decent graphical fidelity. We just want to see that the patterns are going on in the right places in the right ways so yes let's uh let's get into this unless anyone wants to shout out anything while they're here um but yeah to be honest just we're back to normal again so just yeah shout out anytime it's uh i'd love to hear what you've been up to and what's been 
hoeing on, especially in this world, because I haven't been following, except I've been seeing some of Shamara's progress, which has been really cool. Ah. All right. So, let's have a look at this. The... I mean, this graphic is going to be uh, one of the things that's kind of most... The thing we're trying to tackle is the fact that if you're just stretching a texture over things, um, it looks kind of gash, and we need different ways of doing this, especially if you don't have UVs already. Um, let's have a look at this. You probably run into terrain where steep sides of a cliff have their texture stretched so much that it looks unrealistic. Maybe you have a procedurally generated world um, that you have no way to UV unwrap and texture. Tri Triplanar mapping provides an elegant technique to solve these issues and give you realistic textures from any angle or on any complex shape. Here you'll learn about the technique, see the code, and look at some of the benefits, downsides, and other hoo-ha to this technique. So let's let's look at that. Oh, gross things. Let's not have that. Let's do something else. But we do want something uh, that demonstrates the problem on our side before we go too much further. Um, I suppose we could read the problem. So what I'm thinking of doing, originally I just brought a sphere in here um, because we could play the map onto that. Um, but that's kind of boring. I mean, let, let, like, uh, so it would be kind of cool um, to get, yeah, to to get a um, a grid and some noise on it and stuff like this, so we have a proper terrain. Um, <laughs> Shamara's streaming right now. Oh well, then you're in the wrong place. You should follow the quality people. Um, yeah, it's been doing that. Uh, oh, hey, Shin. Yeah, been doing that um, one a day uh, thing recently, which is super cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got to catch up too, but that is not a problem. Uh, that's, uh, it's good content to be watching. So let's have a look. So yeah, we'll see how um, how bad things look and how lazy we're feeling and we'll before we get into this but anyway the problem the most common issue is stretched textures in particular when it comes to terrain the problem lies in uv coordinates of the object that you are texturing in the case of terrain the uv coordinates are spread out in a grid evenly spaced on the xy plane like so oh like this and actually yeah we'll replicate this this problem soon um, this UV layout doesn't take into account height difference in the terrain and causes stretching. I'm sure if any of you have done any kind of basic terrain stuff, even in like engines and things like this, um, well, actually most, like everything modern is going to be taking care of this. But I remember back in the day when I was playing around with dark basic, like a long time ago, 15 years ago or something like this. And this would just be a thing. Yeah. You would get these weird stretching and things like this. Yeah. Um, you can take measures to even out the area for steep polygons by carefully unwrapping the UV coordinates, but that leads to less than ideal results. Yeah, you still have um, warped textures and some tiles, um, such as the center one. Oh, it's saying, and such as the center one are compressed. Sorry. I can read. Uh, you might also be in a position where you cannot unwrap the UV coordinates of the mesh. Uh, the terrain or shape could be procedurally generated. I'm interested in this, especially from a... Um, if we start doing some uh, ray marching stuff and um, yeah, we're using implicit shapes. We can solve these issues with triplanar mapping. Ooh. So this is the pretty results that we're going for. Isn't that lovely? Right. So the first thing I suppose we want to do is kind of recreate this problem. Let's see how much of an ask that's going to be and whether we want to do that. So let's go to, I made a file called prim. I suppose I should really uh, commit this stuff. Um, for Metian, because Metian's always the one that's following on. And we'll push this up somewhere. So we will be episode origin. And what are the odds it's gonna ask me for the thing? Yes, so I will actually do this in a different way. Let's do e shell ssh add and yo oops oh yeah dummy okay so that should be done now and we can push that yes good okay that's pushed up to episode 73 except it's not 73 though is it 
is episode 173. We'll deal with that later. Right. It's up somewhere for now. We'll come back to that. Um, let us see. What are we doing? Um, okay, so we've already got this thing for making a sphere. I'm sure that we have uh, functions in Nineveh for making a grid too. So let's just order complete that and have a look in here. Uh, there is a plane, so let's see what we've got there. Plane, GPU arrays. Um, and I forgot to enable concurrent hints, so let's do that. And no, it's just a plane. We don't have a grid in there, and I really can't be asked to make something for that right now if we don't already have something. Did I not have something there? Box, cone, cube, cylinder, lattice. There it is. I can be lazy. It'll be fine. Right. Um, so let's go through this. Let's go width is 10 and height is 10 and X segments uh, is 50 and Y segments 50. And norms and text codes and all that kind of stuff is on, which is great. And then we're going to make an instance of a mesh passing all all that jazz and I'm not gonna call it make sphere we're gonna call it make terrain and we don't use radius we should really change that um, size is gonna be 10 and let's just use size down here size size okay so now if we change things up a little um, Akladaka I know I missed a couple and then when I came back the Kickstarter had begun oh yeah so oh cool well Welcome. I thought it was your first time here, actually. So, yeah, welcome to the stream. It has been a long time since I've been on, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. I've got to get back into the swing of this as well, because it does feel rather strange right now, but that's okay. So let's um, go in the base and see what we're going to do. So we're just going to swap this out and make it terrain, and then we'll try reset and see what happens. Well, that's not reset, Chris. That's not how you type that word. Okay, so it's gone. And there's a couple of reasons that could be. Um, let's have a look at... Well, there's a few things. Let's look at the camera. Camera zero and the position of the camera. And it's currently at height zero. Let's set the Y of the position to be 10. Um, and it is not a single float, that is correct. Um, and now we can see it. So all that was actually the issue was that we were a little far, farther away. So let's get ourselves out to a semi-sensible position. This is kind of nice. We'll set up here. Uh, we're going to change the texture out in a minute as well, hopefully. Um, and then let's look at the position of the camera and the rotation of the camera. And then we're just going to go into the camera file and set these up as the defaults. Boop, boop, boop. Um, here we are. So we'll uh, ditch that one and copy this coming out that and we are going to grab these numbers down here and set ourselves up so that is the position and that is the rotation and hopefully that's correct and then if we reset uh, camera then we stay exactly in the same place and if I go down here and then reset the camera, we jump back up to here. Cool, so every time we reset now, we're gonna to come to a sensible place and that is good. And so now what we kind of want to do is something with that terrain. Um, rather than actually changing the mesh, I think we'll just shove this in the shader and do the displacement in the vertex shader. Um, so let's muck around with that. And the reason I'm gonna do that is it's just, I have more tools for more GPU functions already set up for doing this stuff. Uh, so it makes it really easy. Um, da, da, da. So let's we're going to change this position here. So 
What are we going to do? Okay, so there is a scale factor on here. Well, let's just do this. We're going to say model pos is um, plus model pos and then some vector, which is 0, 0, 0 for now, which isn't going to affect anything. Fuck you! It shouldn't affect anything. Unless I have the types wrong, in which case it should. Um, and now we need to get ourselves some displacement. Now, trying to remember where in Nineveh this is, I'm sure there's a Nineveh.noise. And we can look for some Perlin noise. And that is... <laughs> has it been a while since you've been writing Lisp, Chris? Yes, yes it has. Where's the... Uh... Okay. So in that case, let's just jump there and have a look at the functions ourselves. What have we got? Um, it seems I didn't write any doc strings. Like some arsehole. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's have a look. So this Perl in noise function here is going to return some stuff. Actually, seeing as it's one of our GPU functions, we should be able to do this. Okay, and then it does return a single float. That's excellent. That's what we want. And that's just us calling a GPU function from, from uh, the CPU side, which is kind of fun. Um, so it's slow response because it was actually doing like sending that data up to the GPU and then coming back and converting it into Lisp data. But it's very nice for just testing stuff. So what are we going to do? We are going to make ourselves a position. So let's do... Let's move this down and then we're going to take the X of model pos and the Z of model pos and that's going to make our displacement and then we can shove that into, oh yeah, this actually needs a variable name, which is going to be y disp, And that's going to be our y displacement. We'll shove it there. And we get some wobbliness, which is nice. Uh, that's a good enough start. It would be nice if it was a little bigger. So let's just do y disp um, times. Let's just multiply it by the scale as well. Okay, that's a little severe. And then bring it down. Okay, so we don't have much in the way of, well, we don't have any normal data right now, so we'll have to deal with that too. Um, as well, we should actually, let's multiply this by something to, yeah, to get something a little more sensible as far as terrain goes. Okay, then let's actually try bringing this up Okay, cool. So now we have some slightly smoother, but quite rough terrain. And then we need to get some normals on that because it's just hard to deal with right now. Um, so what we'll do... Da, 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 da. Um, Let's have a look. How's the best way of doing that? We do have a function for generating normals in Nineveh. It did actually work when you <laughs> fed it the right data. Um, Nineveh dot... Um, what would it be under? We don't have Nineveh. Oh, we do have Nineveh dot normal. Perfect. Simple sample normals. Great. And it takes... Um, Oh, it takes a function that takes a vec2 and it will sample it, I guess, in a bunch of places. Um, excellent. Okay, so if we give it a function that takes an vec2 and returns a float and a position, starting position, and an offset, then it will get us the normal. Okay, so let's turn this into our own little function. So we're going to take make labels and we'll... Um, get displacement and we're going to move everything in here so let's take this and also the scaling part of it da, 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 da. let's 
get rid of all that. We can... Ah, let's leave two in there for now. We can deal with that later. And it needs to take um, a position, which is going to be a vec2. And then the result of this is naturally going to be a float, because that's what comes out of here. So then instead of x, then basically this becomes pos. And this becomes get disp like that. And we'll just comment out this for a second, and we should have the same thing, but no. Oh yeah, progen with no body found, because I haven't wrapped this around the rest, and we don't like that in uh, Varia. I say I haven't been doing much Lisp recently, but one thing I did start by doing, let's see if I've got it to hand, the works Varia, what branch am I on here? No. Um, I have started adding support for complex numbers to Vario because it's just one of the things from from um, from Common Lisp that we can support to a certain degree. Um, Mac was saying, "Congratulations!" I know this is off topic, but congratulations on the Kickstarter. Thank you so much. Like, yeah, I get to work with amazing people, so I'm really glad we get to do this for quite a while, and we get paid. Yes, the last year has been interesting, but I'm ready to be to have some. Financial remuneration. Remuneration. That's not the word. Something like that. Whatever that word is meant to be. Um, yes. So, where are we? I forget what we're meant to pass in here. We're meant to pass in a function. So we're going to pass in get disk. Uh, we're going to pass in a position and an offset. So the position is going to be... Um, ah, I don't know. Let's just call it 2D pos. My brain still feels like it's uh, not quite here at the moment. Let's put a hyphen in there because it's upsetting me. And an offset, um, which is going to be. Let's have a look. Um, well, let's just oh it doesn't really matter does it let's just start with 0.1 um, and we'll go from there I suppose it should be small enough that it doesn't let's do 0.05 um, compile that and watch it freak out and that is not okay because I'm in the wrong language damn you C sharp um, and let's save that as uh, text norm and let's pass that down instead of the normal we were passing through before. We'll pass in this. And then one has to wonder why were then well oh there we go. Perfect. I was about to say why was there no shading? But of course it was because we would before we were just passing in the normal from the, the vertex information, which was straight up, so we we're getting no shading, and now we have a bit of a terrain. And hopefully we can see here that things are kind of smeared out. Um, this isn't the best text to be showing this problem, so I did try and download Sam Staff. So I got this cobble texture, which is apparently tiled. Um, we'll see in a second. Let's see if we can load it. The problem is I don't know if this one is um, what the rights were, because I just grabbed it offline. So if someone is able to... Remuneration, thank you so much. That is the word I was desperately grasping for. Um, yes, if someone could grab us a um, public domain or Creative Commons licensed uh, image, which has, which is tiling, but also has rather large features. So when we spread it across this, we can see stretching, obviously. That would be really handy. Um, and until then, I'm just gonna try and make it work with this. So, let's see what happens when we do jpeg.jpeg. .jpeg. When we do reset, okay. So it's a bit much. Let's uh, let's scale these UVs and render. UV times four or three or two. Who knows? One of those I'm going to pick. Um, all right. I don't know. Let's. How do we get this to really show a problem? I suppose it's kind of jank down here, so that would be, that might be good enough. What I want is something that's very, that when we get to a distance, you can still see that it's tiles on the stream, which is a bit tricky at the moment, because everything looks a bit erse. But that might do. Let, let's start with this and see where we go. 
we have now ourselves set up a little um, terrain. So let's commit that and get it pushed and go back over here and get to the problem. So yes, we are just to, just to be clear, our UV coordinates are coming from um, are coming from the vertex that's being passed in, and that is a flat mesh. And each of the UVs again are spread evenly across the mesh. So when we're displacing, we're stretching things out a bit, and we're seeing that when this one tile is being stretched all the way down here, but it's all squished up down here. Um, <laughs> We're getting like full on linguistic breakdown here, which is fantastic. The word has Latin roots. Um, munus meaning employment, so remuneration is what you get from. There you go, fantastic. Um, why not, boy? I'm really glad you could finally make it, man. That's really cool. It's uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty crazy actually looking at. <laughs> Every now and again, I I peek at the view count, and it's like that's a lot for some Lisp videos. I mean, it's only a quarter, it's it's over a quarter million views in total, and that's for the entire life of the channel. So for a big channel, that's obviously nothing. You get that in hours, but for for me and for this stuff, that's really cool. So right, so we've got normals, we've got a terrain, we've got a tutorial. Try planar mapping in detail. First, let's look at get, uh, the terrain again with triplanar mapping attached to it. Ooh, looks nice. Um, the stretching is gone and the steep slopes look more realistic. Sure, they do. Um, hmm. We could make this more severe. Just thinking, if we take this and raise it to the power of something, like three. We should get some nasty... Like we flatten everything out, but we also make the severe things more severe. Um, I suppose everything's in the... <laughs> Let's have a look. Whoa, it's a bit much. Well, it's a bit crap, but we also do get more severe features. Um, some nice kind of plateaue areas. And it's a very obvious stretching down here, which is kind of good. So this is something we can fix. So looking down, we see, ooh, nice tiles. And then when we look at the side of things, we see big smeary tiles that look like carp. So. That's a good start. And we want to get to this. Uh, Triplanar mapping does this by rendering the texture three times in three different directions, X, Y, and Z axes. Picture a box. First, the texture is projected down from the positive x towards the negative x. No, down the y. I get, then we're going to project it in the x and the z. Um, any fragments, pixels, or geometry that are facing in the direction um, of the x-axis get the texture applied to them, and the same process is applied, blah, blah, blah. Now, the question that should immediately come up, so this is what they're doing, blah, 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 which is great. The question is, where are the seams? This one actually looks all right. Doesn't look like there's horrible seam problems. Might be some there, might be a little going on here. I see some fuzziness, um, but it doesn't look like shit. It doesn't look as shit as I would expect it to. There's some fuzziness down here. So I'm not sure if there's a trick to that or if it's just good choice of assets. Um, looks like the Giants Causeway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bug number 13, that did look a bit weird. Um, Aris is saying because saying, uh, Wynet Boy was saying uh, it took him a while to find a handle on Twitch that wasn't taken um, yes I had the same problem I'm sea baggers on GitHub because some bastard took baggers 
perfectly fairly, and yeah, I will treat it as unreasonable. Um, which I wouldn't mind. They just don't post much open source code, so it's kind of like, I can make a better use of that. They got it fair and square. All right, so all this is done in the fragment shader of your material, essentially textures to geometry three times, uh, once in each direction, and then blends the result. Triplanar mapping does not use UV coordinates at all. Hurrah! Instead, it uses actual world coordinates. Knowing this, let's look at the code. The first part is to cal um, the first part. This meant to be an is is to calculate the blend factor for each direction. Ooh, blending. Right. So, so W norm is the world space normal of the fragment. Interesting. Okay, so you definitely do. Obviously, well, yeah, you obviously need your normals. Um, so we're making sure our normals are always positive for some reason. Okay. Um, then we normalize. Um, force weights to some. Oh man, it just feels like there's something else there. Have I blocked some scar? Let's just copy this for a second and make sure I'm not missing anything here. Blurp. Force weights to sum to one. Do you now? Um, fair enough. And then float um, b equals blending of x plus y plus z. Fair enough. Um, and then blending divide by equals okay right yes so we get the magnitude to be one and then we divide by the sum of the magnitudes in all those directions i can live with that let's go with that then so here it takes the world space normal of the fragment um which is always going to be between um, minus one and one we make it an absolute value. Uh, we don't care if a normal is facing in X or Y, just that it's on the X axis. Fair enough, okay, so that simplifies that. Um, if we did worry about the absolute direction, we would be painting the shape from front, back, left, right, top, and bottom, so three more times. So yeah, by ABSing the more, I only have to think about the three cases. That sounds good to me. Next, we force it to be within a range zero to one, so we end up with a percentage multiplier for each of the axis components. If the normal is facing upwards on the x-axis, we get a y-value of 1, and yeah. Okay, so this is going to be the weighting factors. Um, yeah, the blending factors for each direction. That's kind of interesting. That's the hard part. Oh, this is going to be a quick episode. Um, next, we just mix the three blend values uh, with the texture at that coordinate. Remember that the texture coordinate is in world space. Um, yeah. All right. That is very simple. Oh, and then we've got a section on normals. Excellent. Okay, so what we'll do... <sighs> Let's have a look. Well, let's port this function, because that looks handy. And then we'll ignore... Okay, so let's get the blend, do the sampling, Normal text equals blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then it's remapped. Equals normal scale. Mm, wait a second. Just trying to work out what's going on here. Um, tell you what, let's m ignore the, the, that code for now. We'll just use this code here. We'll make it work, and then we're going to go back and look at normals. So, um, let's just copy all these little bits over, and then we can get working. One, boop. two, actually this is the same deal with some scaling, right? Yes. Oh, right. 
Let's have a look. <laughs> Acolydactyl is saying it's why I love love my handle. Not many people wanting to use it. <laughs> That's true. That's fair enough. It's a good move. Um, I mean, Baggers isn't that, like the most pleasant name to listen to, so I'm not sure how many people wanted to grab that. Apparently enough. Apparently enough to cause me a problem. All I needed was one. Uh, Sergeant Queef was telling a tale about uh, people that try to buy domains and getting turned down or not getting answers back. Um, Asus is talking about something similar with Apple saying iPad was already taken. Yeah, they don't tend to care. Like, what was the other? Like, IT, like, is it the, it's the Apple TV, isn't it? I think they started out with ITV, which is a broadcasting company in the UK. Um, and so there were straight away issues with that. But they, yeah, they, they would have known that with the most basic research. So there was some shit there. Um, Symbolics.com appears to be captured by a domain squatter. That's that is fantastic. Right, let's get this stuff ported over. I'm going to dump this in the Lisp file as a comment, and we'll work with that. Let's pop it down here. Do do do. Now I think we should copy this. Bad version. Good version. Right, cool. So this is going to be what we're working in now. Um, so let's start with that blending factor because that's kind of cool. Um, I was just looking at this. These multipliers with ads. It feels very much like a dot product to me. But I suppose uh, x axis, x axis, uh, x, wait a second. x, x, z? Surely that would be y. So then it would be better to t have this actually as a. Oh no, screw that. Never mind. Um, no, these are colors, so no, not a. Not a dot product in this case. Yeah, we're just using one component here rather than another vector. Shut my face. Right, so. Let's just start off with the simple stuff. Da -da -da -da. Let's turn this into a comment. Let's turn this into a comment. Um, planar blend is it's going to take a normal which is a world normal which is a vec3 um then we are going to make a let's star and we're going to say actually let's just do this i don't know my brain's all over the place okay so um abs norm is ABS of the world normal. And then um, the same, we'll call it max norm for now. I can't think of a decent name for it. Um, normalize, come on now. Max of ABS norm and 0 0.0001. So we're just making sure it's something above zero. Um, I'm going to have this comment here as well. Um, and then we are going to sum these together. So B is um, What are we doing here? Plus x of max norm. Jesus, brain, come on. 
gave you coffee as well. What's going on here? And then we are going to do um, divide max norm by DDD. Back when we put that there. Hopefully, it did not like that. And the reason is this is a defun rather than defun G, so it's not going to like that ever. So let's make that into a GPU function, and now everything is fine. And so what we're going to do now is get the, well, we'll just do this down here for now because we haven't done the normal section. I'm not sure how these can interact. So let's just do this the same way they are. Uh, X axis is texture from the sampler um, given the coordinates that we're using. And now where are we getting those from? Because um, I was not paying attention. Okay, so the coordinates would be surely the position in world space. I get the feeling that's the first time that was mentioned, but we will see. At that texture coordinate. Okay, so let's just use, since we're projecting it on, if we use the, um, the world space of the fragment, um, then we're just taking the kind of 2D version of that, and that should do the job. So let's, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. So we'll swizzle. Um, what is the fragment position? Um, we do want that in... Um, yeah, we do want that in world space actually. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pass along world pos to, or just that. Yeah, let's call it world pos. Effect three. Let's add these to both shaders, and the reason is I want to be able to switch back and forward, um, and that changes this signature. So we've got to do this correctly. Let's get up here. Um, world pos. There we go. So let's do that, and it freaked out. Um, invalid arguments for swizzle. That does sound correct, and it's saying that some things are incompatible. Well, that sucks. Okay, so let's abort for now. We're just going to freak that out. We're going to abort this as well. Um, we are going to come down here, have another look. And it's because I didn't finish that swizzle. I just wrote this and never did anything with it. Um, so let's just finish that off. So we're going to take the world pos um, and we're going to take the y and the z. And apparently this is going to be multiplied by scale. Um, this is going to be text scale, which is going to be a vec. Oops, no, it's just going to be a float. Let's just do that. Um, Hopefully that'll be all right. Yeah. X, Y, Z, so Y and Z axis. Uh, it's be X and Z and X and Y, and that should be everything we need, except of course the, um, I'm just gonna call this cull for now. But it is the sum of multiplying the X axis, come on now, uh, with X of blending, and we haven't actually got blending yet, so let's get that. Blending is just calling um, the triplate of blend function with a normal. So let's pass in norm there, and that should be fine. Um, I think that's it. So then it's X and then Y and then Z, hopefully, because that will make the most sense. Um, X, Y, Z for the blending. And that should be fine. Let's see what's going on over here as well, because I have been off in my own head for a second there. Um, Touching Queep apparently has the, the domain emacs.church. Fair enough. 
There are a bunch of Irish people in the pub outside where I live. Something like, wait, you want those people there? That's the thing, like, if, if it's a pub, those are the people you want at your pub. Um, and yes, the pub is loud. <laughs> um, we do have a bunch of islands here, but it seems like a logistical nightmare to transport a pub worth of drunk Irish went out there. That's worth it financially. It'll be good for you. Do it. Um, okay, so let's try that again. When we compile, it doesn't freak out, but when we actually run this code, we shall see. So play start, and now it's still not happy about this. So let's move this error over here and go and see what it's unhappy about. Sorry, the outputs are not compatible with the outbars from the previous stage. Um, yeah, so we did, we put out the clip host, which is fine, GL will take that, and then we're taking the world position. Ah, wait, the world position, I bet, is a vector four. So let's just swizzle that down to a vector three. And all of a sudden it's happy. Okay, so good, we're back in business again. Um, we're still using the original color and all that kind of jazz, so let's just see what happens. If we take this out and replace it with coal. Well, it looks like garbage. That's special. So, is that related to the scale? Is that related to the sampling settings? I think the default is... Um, is that it will repeat in all directions. So the wrap is set to repeat, so... It's not that. Um, now something else has been a bit fucked up. Let's have a look. Ah, now wait a second. We we knew from the article that the way they handled their coordinates was a little different. So could it be related to that? There is a baby over the way. I'm not sure if it's coming up on the mic, but it is going hell for leather. It's super annoying. Um, right, let's have a look. So we normalize and all, we get the light direction, blah, 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 and the light amount. Yes, that's unrelated. Then we do the triplanar blend. Let's just actually visualize that. So let's look at the blending. So we are at least getting different values across the surface. Not sure if that makes sense. It's kind of interesting that we're getting different values on either side of this. I would expect it on a difference between this side and this side. But I would expect the same here and here, I would have thought. But we're getting different values anyway. Let's start there. Um, okay, so then we're sampling our texture based on the Y and Z world position. So Y and Z is going to give us a vertical and depth plane. Um, then we're sampling this texture for the X axis. Well, that makes sense. It's the This axis is the only one missing from here. Then Y is the only one missing from here, and Z is the only one missing from here. So that makes some sense. I can see what it is. Text scale. We don't supply it. And so it's going to default to something like zero. So let's go down to here. Um, and text scale is going to be one for now. And with that done, whoa, Jesus. It didn't like that at all. Is not a locally known argument keyword. Ah, oh shit, there's another thing I'm doing. When I'm compiling the whole file, um, no, don't do that. Um, when I'm compiling the whole file, it's compiling this one, and then it's compiling this one. So, um, yes, it is freaking out, because even though it's set up here, it's not set up here. So the first thing we're going to do, just for comfort's sake, is we're going to move this here, and actually do that up here as well, for stylistic reasons. And we'll compile, and now that compiles again. Hurrah! 
but um, if we do coal here and do this, hey, that's looking a bit more promising. Those look like they might be tiles down there, and it's just the scaling that's the issue. So let's take the text scale and set it up to Oh yes, it's probably going to be this direction, isn't it? So, well, it's not looking immediately better, I must admit. Let's have a look. Still seeing big stretched out ones here. So I'm not sure. Doesn't look particularly great. Hmm. We might have to tile it with something completely regular to begin with, so we can see the stretching more easily, just like a checkerboard pattern. Um, yeah. Somewhat anticlimactic there. All right, but in the meantime as well, um, we're gonna call this old frag stage and then we're just going to come down here and we're going to do this old frag stage and comment it out. Oh, fuck you. There we go. Okay, so... I don't know, that looks weird to me. It doesn't look right. Um, we are using colour. Like, if we just change it to... Huh. X axis. See, that makes some sense. So, the, in the X direction, that looks reasonably tiled, actually. And how about from the Y direction? Sorry, not the Y direction, the X direction from the other side. Fine. Yes. And then, if we look at the Z axis. Again, we see the stretching in this direction, which is what we'd expect. And we come here, and everything looks good. Bam. Looks nice. That is exactly what we want. And then, we look from the Y direction. And this is what, yeah, again, we should see smearing in these directions. Both the X and the Z direction. And then looking down from the top, everything should look pretty peachy. Which it kind of does. So it does say something about our blending right now not being awesome. I suppose this is one of the things I was worried about, so it's actually quite good that we're getting this. Uh, I'm going to move around this side because it's a bit better lit. And we could still see the issue. Look at that. Nasty. Right, but that's with x-axis. We'd expect that. So when we do call... Yeah, okay. So the y is still very dominant, even though we're on a very steep slope. And that seems a bit funky. So let's go back, back up to here and see what's wrong. What time we're we at? We're at 21.53. Of course, we're running up to 11 tonight because we started at 9. Um, sorry, that's a Norwegian time. Okay, so we take the world normal. We ABS it. We normalize the little bugger. And we do max of a normal with a float um let's i actually want to do the how do we do this ah i can't remember the combination for there we go um i, I wanted to find the combination that i've mapped for um looking up the glsl documentation but yeah we can see because I was interested in max when you have a vector and a float. So let's have a look through. There it is, max. That would be vec3 and float that we're interested in, which is this one. Um, yeah. Max returns the maximum of the two parameters. It returns y if y is greater than that. It returns x. So I'm guessing it's doing that component-wise. That isn't the best documentation. Uh, but we're going to have to assume that, yeah, it's doing that component-wise um, if you're passing in a float. Again, like we could, ah, no, we can't really test that. 
can we? Um, let's do Funkle G, Lambda G. Uh, foo is a back three, and Bar is a float. And then we're going to use max foo and bar. And the reason I'm having to wrap it in this lambda is we've got a function locally already called max, so we're not going to be able to GPU call it like that. Um, so we'll do uh, four. So let's do one and four and seven, and then we'll set the max to be um, three. And that makes a lot of sense. Cool. So that looks like what we'd expect so five and five and seven yeah okay so it's doing component wise max on those and returning that vector good right now with that so th there's a couple of possibilities there's either that the we found one of the cases where it really sucks um which i'll be a little surprised by at this point um We've written the code wrong, which is very possible. Um, so this one that's called blending here. So yeah, this is making sure that all the components are over zero. Wait a second, don't move. <laughs> we ABS the world normal. Uh, we make sure all the components are a little bit, at least a little bit over zero. We normalize that so the magnitude is one. And then we add all the components together, um, which is this one, blending X, Y, Z. They all get summed together into this float. And then this, which again is our max norm, is divided by the vector three, bam, bam, bam. And that's returned. I think that's correct. So I would have hoped at that point that this one would have had very small contribution from the Y and very large uh, contribution of the X and Z and that would have really dominated and so we wouldn't see these the big stretch marks in the Y case. <sighs> but maybe we need a more severe edge for that to happen. So we'll have to see. Um, And we can totally do that. Like we'll, um, we can do some clamping and some scaling of the noise texture to generate something more akin um, to this. But again, look at this. Look at the, like well, this one. This one's perfect. This one has very steep sides, so it would look really good. This one though, this one's way more um, a shallow incline than ours. So if it works well here, it should definitely work on our little guy. Okay, so if you're using triplanar mapping and normal maps, you will need to apply the same procedure to the normals in the fragment shader. We're not using normal maps, so we won't worry about that now. We should bring normal maps back into this soon, though. Um, downfalls. The first downfall you encounter is the performance. We're not really worried about the performance. Um, you're doing this if you need to, um, when something else isn't an option. Uh, the next significant downfall is the blending at 45 degree angles, especially where textures overlap, where you, or where you are using texture splatting. You can perform four more renders um, from the angle corners, but the performance hit would probably not be worth it. Yikes. Um, so yeah, this is less than ideal. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So let's go and have a look at that code again and see what, see how it compares to what we've got. Because this is the... This is their function. Doot, 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 doot. Nasty. Right, so let's just It's the world space normal of the fragment. We definitely are passing in the world space normal, right? Let's have a look. When we um are doing the displacement stuff. 2D pos is based on the model position. So, in this case, because we're not actually doing any translating on this guy, model position that has been scaled 
is equivalent to our world position. Because um, our model to world matrix in this case is, uh, if I remember, identity. Yes. So, yeah. Sure. Um, and then we generate a normal from that. And we pass that over here. And that comes down here. Um, and then we normalize that right off the bat. So that is a normal in world space. Ah. Let's compare our functions up here. I'm going to get rid of this code as well. There's gonna be something dumb here. I've, I'm really well. I'm really hoping there's something dumb I've just missed, rather than this just not being very good. Um, we'll try messing around with the terrain as well and see if it just the shape of the terrain really has the uh, thing. Yeah, Asu saying. I, I'm sorry. I'm very behind the times here. I know that was five minutes ago. Doing max component wise seems the most natural guess. Yeah, it really is. But it's nice to check these things out because otherwise you get. I, I at least get these kind of lingering doubts because my memory's terrible. Um, I'm very quick to assume that it's just my memory that's wrong. And so I'll have this lingering thing saying, oh, maybe Max does perform differently. But yes, so. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Try playing a bend. Okay, so. We take the ABS of the world normal. Bam. We, and that's called ABS norm. That's only used one other place, and that's when we max it. So we max it here. And that's this, fine. Then we normalize it here, and we shove that in max norm. And then we sum all the components. We shove that in B. We sum the components x, y, z of max norm. Um, and then we divide blending by. Uh, th a vector three with all Bs in the components, which is what we have here. And then we return the result, which is what we also have here. We return blending, and we're just returning the result of this, which is that. <sighs> so that's it. That function does look correct. Oh, while we're here, there was someone suggesting that there was a typo. Look, oh yeah, it's the one we spotted. Um, X by X by Z should be X by Y by Z. Um, yeah, it's definitely nice that this enables you to check these things quickly. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, that's, that's one of those things that Actually, we made that uh, most of that functionality on the stream itself was being able to call GPU functions directly from the REPL, and it's it does pay off just be able to ask those quick questions. It's been really nice. Um, but this is a little bit different, so I really want to get this and have a proper read of it. Because I expect there's something we're just missing here. Get rid of the tabs. And let's see what we can do. So, get triplane and blend. We do that here, triplane and blend with the normal. Um, we sample the texture three times X, Y, and Z. Um, by yz, xz, xy times what they're calling as normal repeat now, which was the scale factor. Um, they then take the RGB from that. Let's do that. Why not? Seeing as that's a difference, let's let's start there. Xyz. Um, C 
cool. And then the normal text is x axis times blending.x. And then that should have been y axis, that was a known mistake. y by y, z by z. And then each one is summed to the previous. That's fine. Again, like the multiplies are going to happen first. So this is the correct application of brackets, which is fine. And then what they have normal text, they then remap that. So this is interesting. So this is them sampling their, I'm guessing this is their normal texture. And that would explain why they're doing the remapping here as well. Um, but where do they get their color from then? Because this is meant to be about sampling the sampling the texture they're going to use to actually texture the object as well. Um, T is vec three blah blah blah. Okay. So this will be tangent and bitangent. This is their TSB matrix, and that's the normal. Okay, but where's the color? Suddenly they're not interested in the color anymore. That is rather strange. Hmm. This is probably the wrong time to find out that the tutorial's a bit hmm, suspect. But it feels, otherwise, it feels reasonable. Okay, so let, let's do some things first. Let's, um, let's take this out. So that's one possible output. What I'd like to do, actually, is I'd like to look at the Y component of blending. Um, and the reason is it should be bright on the flat parts so the top here the bottom here that makes perfect sense now we also get these crosses coming down here i guess they're the most aligned okay yeah i'm hoping there's a better function for this elsewhere but this is what's interesting right that like it's it's gray here. It's still quite bright, but it's not as strong as if we say, oh, fuck, okay. That's interesting. See, that makes a lot of sense, right? Nothing here relatively strong in these directions. Nothing here relatively strong in these directions. strong here but then strong everywhere like everywhere kind of has a component so if it's anything it's the why so let's have a look at this again is there anything we're fucking up up here it's got to be something man or it might just be that this is considered a substandard function to be using for the triplanar blend and we should use something else or maybe our input data is crap. Um, like if our normals are all fucky, then maybe that's the problem. But you would have expected them to be consistently fucky everywhere. Um, da, 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 da. World normal, ABS. Max norm, yes. Like there's not that much here to go wrong, you know? That's interesting. Um, if anybody spots anything, I'd love to know, because this seems reasonable. <laughs> it's the kind of thing when you start wondering about
Like this, it does expand to blending equals blending divided by VEC3. Like, I haven't just forgotten how the world works, right? So the result equals this divided by the VEC3, which is Bs, which is this B, which is the sum of the normalized components. And what are you doing? It's not going to make much of a difference at that point. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a bugger. So what should we do now? I guess we kind of need to hunt down... I mean, really, it's just that this, this, these contributions down the sides are just still, still so strong. Um, let's take an object which looks a little different and, uh, and see what happens. So if we tweak this displacement function, for example, let's, uh, oh, yeah, let, let's go have a look up here. So let's take this to one. <laughs> Whoops. That's interesting. Is it really heading off that far? Let's have a look. So what is it returning now? Oh yeah, it's returning an int because this should probably be that. Oh yeah, this should also be, okay, fine. Yeah, just clips out really hard after that. I wonder what exactly that is. I also don't want to go <laughs> start digging too deep into what that is. It's just going to be a pain in the bum. Um, yeah, I mean, we could we could cap the tops off really easily. For example, like if we did like max of uh, the displacement and I don't know, let's, let's start with three and just see what happens. Oh no, we should do min actually. Min. And we should make this eight or something and see how it, okay. So now we, we can bring this down a bit and we should get some nice plateaus. Okay, so what we should see here is that obviously the tops are very, very white, as we'd expect. They would be completely dominated by um, things coming in the y direction, but the sides are still, like, the components really add up. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you're taking a sum of the components. So all of the y contributions you're getting from the x side plus all the other ones. But then you are dividing them, so should that really be a problem? Mm. Don't know. And then let's uh, multiply the whole thing by two to make everything a bit more severe as well. 
again, even with the darkening there, like we come back down to color, swap these around, let the texturing go back in. Like we're still getting a lot of contribution from the the big stretched out ones. It's just not something that plays very well together. So I'm really hoping that it's just the function that's a bit fucky. And uh, T. Soding, hello, welcome back. It has been a while. I've been uh, off doing some Kickstarter stuff. Uh, I <laughs> we here for some PHP ASM Lisp. You're in the wrong place. Excellent. You're very welcome. Um, ignoring chat. Excellent. Good, good, good. Ah, oh, dearie me. So yeah, we were doing some triplanar mapping. Um, or attempting to. And we feel like the the uh, code that we got from, like we've actually done the code right according to the tutorial we're looking at, but it's kind of ass. It hasn't done a very good job at, um... yeah. So there's a couple of things that could be wrong. It could actually be that the normals are all wrong. Why would that be? Um, let's have a look at, like if we have the displacement thing here, Wait a second. That could be right, actually. No, because because everything at the beginning is in um, is at y. Um, is, sorry, it's zero in the y coordinate. Um, so the only height it has, it's getting from this. Well, actually, we do add it on. So let's just try this. Let's do x from the model position. Z from model position. I'm very sure that this won't actually make a difference. Well, <laughs> you know, other than fucking everything up. Other than that, it should be fine. What the fuck did I do there? That was cool. Let's bring that back. Okay. So we had a vector four here. Are we saying that its y component is that large already? I think we're going to have to visualize the normals because if the normals are wrong, that would account for everything that we're seeing. Um, but this is very interesting. So I would have thought. So we've got them. Oh wait, no, that's fine. So, x of model pass. So that this should be the same as. Oh fuck you, Chris! Come on. Class y of model pass and z of model pass. Da 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 da. And the last component, right? That should be exactly the same. Why is that not exactly the same? What have I done? Come on, Brainier people, what have I done here? There's something really simple that I'm I'm cocking up. That's super strange. This is, oh man, it's gonna annoy me so much because I know when I look back at this, it's gonna be so painfully obvious. What is this? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, if you set the um, Y component to zero, then when you're getting the W multiply, when you're transforming into normalized device coordinates, you are going to have issues. So, yes, that was that. Um, so that's cool. So then what I was trying to say, hopefully, is that removing this should have no effect on that because everything was at zero to begin with. So even though we're generating the normals only based on um, the displacement function, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, the 2D position that we're passing in is X and Z of model pass. And that's also what we're using here, so that should be fine. We're sampling the function in slightly different places. Maybe it's the distance we're sampling here is causing issues? That could actually be a thing. So if we do 001, 
Oh, okay. Right, so the way we're generating the normals might be at issue here. That's kind of interesting. Let's watch what happens to the uh, Y component when we start fucking around with this. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so the further I'm sampling away, the better result we're getting, at least from the normals, in terms of the Y contribution. Right, that probably makes a lot of sense. So it was where I'm sampling out into the um, into the um, what am I trying to say? The Perlin noise field. It clearly wasn't far enough. Oh wait, yes, we're then oh we're fucking around with the position here quite a bit. So we then scale it by 0.1. Is that going to cause us any other problems when we're doing this? shouldn't do because it should be starting from 2d pos and then working out by a certain distance but we are scaling it so it's probably getting just too close and we're not getting a decent normal out of it yick anyway in that case we can probably just set this to one we probably get a reasonable result i was actually kind of happier when we were getting to about 0.7 because we still get most of the top looks bright um that looks a little better let's actually go down and see what happens um, when we look at the different components. So if we look at X of blending now, interesting. And then Z of blending. All right, yeah, that, that's probably feasible. And um, let's change it back to Y and let's switch this round and then let's actually have a look at what we've got. And would you look at that? Actually, that looks better. We've got some nastiness here where we get some blending on axes, axes but, oh dear, but the shadowing looks terrible. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure about those normal because the shadow, like the shadows, look way better before. But it is something related to how we're um, generating our normals here. So this function, all it does is it it executes this function um, a bunch of times. Hold on, <laughs> just need to have a think here. Simple sample normals. Shouldn't this be? Yeah, it's going to get the height in different places on the 2D field. And it's going to use that to generate the normal. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, like when we started with this, nice shadows, bad blending. Like down here, we get all kinds of crap around here. And like the large stretched out versions here are totally dominating. But when we up their size towards like five, we get a lot better on the um, triplanar mapping side of things. Like the X and the Z components are definitely dominating. Like the X and Z contributions are dominating over the y, over the Y contributions. But the shadows get a lot worse. So that's kind of disappointing. Um... And I'm not sure what the best answer for that is right now. I kind of like to visualize those normals and then see if we can learn anything from them. So I think that's what we're going to do is we'll add a geometry pass to this and we'll see what we get out. Um, now, what's the easiest way to do this? I think Nineveh might even have some code set up for this already. Otherwise, we can just steal it from something else. Let's have a look. It works. Nineveh. Um, where would it be, actually? Oh, it would be normals, wouldn't it? Calculate normals. Da, 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 da. This is interesting because I know this function works well. That we've tested this one. Like these are using a slightly different approach by the look of it. And I wonder if they're actually correct. I didn't write down where I got these from. 
So we'll have to investigate actually generating normals from um, yeah from two D coordinates. Or we could use this. We could actually change our function to produce um, positions, which will just be the um, x z plus the offset that we've generated, and then we should be good. Um, yeah, I wonder. It's going to be a little weird because it's going to sample up and down. So isn't the center contribution going to be added twice? I'm not really sure. I don't know what to think about that, to be honest. Um, yeah, that will be interesting. So we might actually have to look up to check that this function is actually correct. Um, so um, if someone actually wants to look up generating um, a normal from um, yeah, I suppose what amounts to two um, D coordinates and an um, and an offset. So yeah, ge generating normals from a height map is what we're looking for. If someone wants to look that up uh, before I do, that would be really cool. Um, otherwise, let's uh, let's go and add some. Let's go and add a geometry pass. And Cinders have already done that. Rather than trying to think about it, we'll do what we normally do and just steal something from the examples. So Kepler dot examples, examples, um, normals, normal mapping. No, uh, geometry, basic geometry shader. Here we go. Da, 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 da. So let's just start copying things. Actually, before I do, let's save this. Issues with blending. Let's push, push that rather than just hit random keys, Chris. And then, yeah, we're going to add the jump pass. So pipeline. Let's go and add that here. And so we really should specify these now rather than just leaving them implicit. That one's just still there so we can swap it in and out easily. I think we might have to remove it soon though because the geometry pass is going to confuse things quite a bit. Um, So this is interesting actually. We kind of want to do this. We might want to do this as a separate render pass actually rather than just adding geometry. Um, yeah, because otherwise it's going to get confusing. Okay, so let's actually take this whole. Screw this. <laughs> let's take this whole thing. Kill. Right. Let's set up a couple of lines here. Let's dump that code and let's have a look through. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a vertex, which is G, B, and D, which is fine. Um, we're going to, yeah, in this case, we would have a model to clip matrix, which we don't have now. Um, so yeah, it wants to pass some values through. And then what's it going to do with them? So. What was the second value here? So this gets passed as the clip position. And then it's the normals that are being passed through, I guess. Hmm, that's interesting. So we kind of want to copy most of this. Uh, no, that's the frag stage, Chris. You're being an idiot. Where is the vertex stage? This one. Actually, can we just reuse this? Because this might have everything we need already. Yeah, we can probably just use this. Come on, Chris. Work it out. Where are we? Um...
Yeah, so this goes away. And then whatever data is coming out of here is going to be fed into our geometry stage here. So originally it was expecting three vector three normals, but now it's going to be a bit different. It's going to have a few things coming in. What does it have? A well position, a normal, and UVs. So we're going to have to have them anyway. Well position, um, norm, and UVs. So well pluses. <laughs> I don't know. Well positions, normals, and UVs. Um, and that was VEC3, VEC3, VEC2. But now we're getting arrays of them. So that's why it's an array of VEC3, array of three vector threes, array of three, uh, three normals, array of three vector two UVs. We're only really interested in these normals. We'll see what we can do here. So I think most of this stuff is already done for us. We're generating line strips. Uh, we're generating six vertices maximum for the primitive coming in. Um, this function is already set up. So all it does is we have a magnitude of a line, which I'm going to set this up 1.3. Um, we start with the GL position of whichever, th well, the index is going to be zero first time around. So this will be zero. We'll get the input data, uh, which will include um, the GL position, which is that first argument that came out of the vertex shader. Uh, we stick that in P0, and then we, to that we add um the first normal we multiply it by magnitude we add it to p and then yeah we we emit a position emit a vertex set the start position emit a vertex at the end position emit a vertex and then end primitive and then we're done we do that three times for the three vertices of the poly that's been passed in i think that's actually all right and then all that's coming out of this is, um, actually nothing's coming out of this. We're just gonna uh, set it yellow to the stuff that's drawn. All right, let's just see what happens if I compile. No, it doesn't like this at all. Okay. Couldn't find something called normals geom. Really? It's right there. Okay, it's because it freaked out. Um, what's wrong with you? Uh, symbol normals is undefined. Yes, because I changed it. So actually, I'll just rename that to normals and this should probably be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then normals frag should be okay, which then means this pipeline should work. So def pipeline could not find the GPU function called normal geom vec3. Oh yeah, because it's now vec3, vec3, vec2. Right, so that compiles now. Um, let's just call this random norms and instead of calling some pipeline it's me calling draw normals didn't like that text scale and scam uh, sam are not known argument keywords i guess they're not that does make sense and doesn't need those Apparently it does need some of those. Which one did I take out? Scale. Oh yeah, it needs scale. Fine. All right, so with that done, let's go back to, this is the, oh God, where am I? Base, here we go. So when we're actually doing the rendering. Um, so we're gonna do this and copy and paste it. And this is just gonna be calling render norms, which is that function just made up. We're not passing in the sampler. We're doing that. Those look like they might be normals down there. We're going to go and check them out. We're going to make them a bit longer though. Um, 0.9. And let's go have a look at what we've got here. What's confusing to me, we're missing some normals down here. Where are those guys? These ones look, don't look too terrible. Ah, is it they're pointing the wrong direction? That would be rather fucky. That would be rather fucky, and that would cause some issues too. Let's um let's go back up to our fragment shader again where we're having issues. And I will get back to the chat in a second. But I'm gonna set this displacement back down to 0.1. 
but that did not help with some other stuff huh this is really intriguing to me so what's confusing is that we should always be rendering the normals Oh no, I suppose we are probably doing a depth check, aren't we? So let's just use with set f and turn off the depth check briefly. With set f, uh, the place is going to be depth test function, and we're going to set it to nil for the duration. There we go. That's a little bit better. And what do you know? These normals are shit. Or at least <laughs> some of them are definitely shit. Look at that. So the ones on the top, fine, but what's all this? Okay, so the problem there is definitely the normals at that point are just useless. Um, which is very intriguing. So let's see what happens. But what's odd there? What's odd with all this is we get... I guess we get... What confuses me at first, at least, is that this didn't look too bad, you know? There were shadows roughly where I expected there to be shadows, you know? Um, it's on one side and not the other and all that kind of crap. So light will be coming from here and there's shadow down there. And it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look completely shit. I mean, it does look pretty buggy, actually, now I come to look at it, but... Yeah, I mean, it's on this side. The light's coming from this direction. It's hardly awesome, but it's also... Didn't think it was completely fucked. But looking at those normals, they definitely don't look right. Um, hey, Zuluino. Sorry, you missed a bit. Jace is saying render doc. Yeah, we could use that, actually. Um, Daniels is saying jobs must be easier to find when you're really good at niche languages. I'm not sure, actually. I think it was more that, I mean, like, I did get a job based off, in part, work I'd done with Lisp. But the reason was actually from doing these videos. Like, it was obvious that I cared about compilers and graphics. Um, and even though I was doing shit ones, my head was in the right place. So it was way back at the beginning of Keppel. So my, it was my first attempts at compilers um, back when I only just knew what a compiler was. And it was bad. But obviously my, I was interested in it. So when there were people looking for someone who's enthusiastic and can learn, you know. And then when we met up and we started talking and we were definitely on a similar wavelength. So I ended up getting the job off the back of that. It was very strange, but very cool. Um, but I think it's, yeah, it's less that the niche language is in demand, but more that you force your brain into just in a, into a few ways of thinking. If you end up doing something like you do some Lisp to the point where you can write something useful in it and you do some, um, I don't know, pick something else, fucking um, prologue to the point you can be useful in that. And you understand, like, start to get a feeling for there is no one true language that's actually good at everything and what those kind of trade-offs are. Just, yeah, you, I don't know. You just become better at stuff in general. Those aren't normals at all. I know, right? They're complete garbage. What is going on? Um, so yes, my thought is that this function we've been using for 3D stuff has been working fine. These functions are bullshit. And that is quite possible because these, I don't remember a project where I've tested these. So this is very likely wrong. Look. And that really, I mean, when we're <laughs> when we're looking at this, it's hard to argue, you know. Um, let's just have a look at the uh, normal usage down here. We've got norm. We normalize it right at the top, so everything else is using a fully normalized version. So it's not that. And then we take the dot product of that and the light direction and we do the normal stuff and that's the your basic crappiest lighting. And then 0.1 is added, which is your ambient 
and we multiply that by a color. And that's it. There's nothing there. So let's go and see how these normals, normals, very broken normals behave when we start changing where we're sampling from. It's a bit annoying actually with the depth test on. Um, <laughs> look at this absolute bullshit. <laughs> so bad. Right. Okay, let's go up here. Well, at least we know it's not the triplanar mapping that's the issue, which makes way more sense, right? It's going to be art covered that's the issue rather than this. Always. Um, okay, right. So the normals change. They're super broken still, but they're, uh, they're broken in different ways. Um, and so it was just really highlighting the problem. So everything was... We were getting some shadows due to displacements, but uh, yeah, what a load of nonsense. Okay, so that's fun. So all we, what we actually need to do is go and replace this function, this simple sample normals thing. Uh, Darius is saying, have to go now, watch the rest on YouTube. Thanks for the stream, and uh, we should let you tell us about it. Thank you, sir. It'd be good to see you. Uh, if you come up with anything while on YouTube, just drop them in the comments, and I'll be sure to read them. Um, awesome, yeah, see you next week. Uh, Arasus is saying... Um, I wrote some cock for my bachelor thesis. It wasn't even about code anymore. It was about proving some very abstract theory. Yeah, that's cool. Like that's again, I would like to, I would like to have some experience with a non-Turing complete language of any kind. Cock would definitely fit that description. Unfortunately, I mean, I don't have the mathematical. I don't have a problem that I need to solve with that. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, but it's the same reason that I've still got. It's not sitting on my desk at the moment. But the type theory books still haven't been read. I've got some excuses for that, though, at least. Or at least I can come up with some based on, like, oh, I'm way the tail spire, things like that. Okay, so. Um, generate normals for, yeah, from height map. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. Here's a theory. What if... Let's just have a look at this, uh, at this function. So it samples this function in a bunch of different places. Doot, 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 doot. Based on the offset, fine. It gets itself nine positions, and then it does some math to work out what to do with them. Um, I get interested by this component always being one. That feels weird. Let's just do something with this very briefly. I just want to see what happens if we try and re-express this in terms of this. It's a bit weird though because this is really designed to be used with the density function where you'd expect a certain value on the inside and outside and things like this. To, and one would be negative, one would be positive and I would expect there to be some kind of offset there. So I'm not sure how this is going to behave. But it takes a VEC3 and it returns a float. Um, returns a float, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to... I can't think of a decent way of repurposing this easily. I, I do just need to find a better a better function on this. I'm going to look for a couple of answers on this. Oops, made that a bit smaller, hard to read. Let's just look up at a couple of samples.
Now, is this applied directly into his code? His, her, who knows? Ether Raptor Games, their code. Um, tangent by tangent, normal, blah, blah, blah. Center L minus center R. Yes, this looks different. So we sample to the left, we sample to the right, we sample up, we sample down. And we normalize those and then we cross product them together. Okay, so here is a bit more of a breakdown. Let's have a look. Um, Jason's saying, but proofs are programs. Or was it the other way around? You're thinking of algorithms, not proofs. Um, so Chimera. Zuluino has had similar issues with our height map normals. Um, People are talking about the technicalities of the Curry Howard isomorphism or equivalence or whatever it was. Yeah, Shin, Shin I, I saw some clip map stuff there and it made me think of uh, your work. I do, I would need to just sit down and go through all that as well. Let's just do this little cheap version here and see what we get because it's kind of interesting to me at this point. And we only have minutes left, so rather than doing the, the good version, we'll do the quick version. Um, so the result is going to be the cross product of two things being normalized. So normalize, normalize, um, and it's a vector 3. Um, so 2, apparently. Not sure where those twos come from, but we'll find. And this is the y coordinate here, so this seems to be center r, center l. Is this going to be the y coordinate at the position sample to the right and the position sample to the left? It may well be. Let's uh, take this. What have we got here? Let's have a look. So let's just do sampling to the left. Sampling to the right. Where's the ups and downs? Did I just fuck that up? I did. There we go. Two, three, four. Oh, for my analness. Zero, one, two, three. Yep, there we go. Right. Um, we'll get rid of this blighter for now. And we're going to do something with this. So I'm assuming, because he said, I switched two around and put two for the distance since I wasn't sure what the scale of your height map was at. So these twos were just meant to be scale. Um, so let's go with that. I didn't see where scale was used last time. Um, Then the center is um, subtracting right minus left. So let's just look at which one's right. Um, S3, S0. Then down and up. So. S1, S2, so something like that. Well, it's different. We'll have thought the cross product 
two normalized things is going to be. Oh no. Hmm. Doesn't look too promising, does it? All these completely sideways. So, the most likely thing is that I got this wrong too. Um, tangent by tangent. They're talking about flipping those around. Why not? But it's a cheap thing to check, isn't it? We can just do that. No, nope, of course it's not that. Um, again, center rail minus center rail. We didn't actually know what that exactly was. Where did they get their center R and center R from? Okay, it was from this. Um, so map is just collecting floats representing the height for each vertex. So center U. Jeepers, it's not the most pleasant code to read, is it? Um, Let's have a look. Nada vision. Why is everything in parentheses? Because otherwise it falls off. Um, Shimera is saying, instill me with fear and dread. Mostly because I never got it them to work 100%. And seeing people get it done makes me feel real bad. I get the feeling, man. I still I, I need to go back to look at the um, ambient occlusion stuff. Uh, because, again, just normals and issues there. The problem is I, I need some reliable content. Because, like, when I'm doing different parts of it, I just don't know where I'm fucking up. Um, also, what's with that browser? Uh, or what is that browser? It's Firefox. Um, so, yeah. Well, that didn't help at all. So that's rather annoying. Um... Let's have a look at this render shit again. Da, 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 da. No points four. Yeah, so it's consistently bad at least. Um, so we need to look into that basically. We need to replace these with uh, functions that are definitely actually working for these things. I'll make sure I note down where I get them from this time and do a bit more testing. I feel like we're on the right track though. I get the idea of the planar mapping stuff, um, but I think what we'll do is we'll end up finishing off this off at the beginning of next week and then we'll get into something else because we've got like six minutes left and it's very unlikely knowing our track record that we're going to get it fixed now. Um, four adjacent points. Well, that's interesting. Cross A and B. Cross B and C, C and D, D and A, then normalize. Feels a little different what they're saying there. Um, it's an N normalize in the end if you divide it by 2 times S. That's got a lot of conditionals in it. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay. So, yep, I'm very sure we're going to have to come back to this one. Um, but that's okay. That's not a problem. So we've got actually the hard part done. Well, hard part done was pretty much just reading through and copying out and getting the idea. Um, let's uh, undo this because we didn't exactly replace it with anything better. Just different kinds of broken. Um, so 
So yes, we will revisit this soon. Um, I am going to be getting back to the mesh generation stuff because we were looking at marching cubes the other day. I want to get to dual marching cubes. Um, I need to take some time to go through that papers and I've, I've just been super busy at the moment. Um, I have to really dedicate most of my time to doing stuff for the um, around related to the Kickstarter and the game. Uh, so that's going to carry on. Um, what else has been going on? Da -da -da -da. Yeah. There was a few projects we kind of left um, somewhat unfinished. Uh, YouTube.com. Let's have a look. Um, pixels with Lisp. Yes. Or the last ones, because I feel like we had a bunch of stuff that we just haven't quite finished yet. So we did Marching Cubes. We got something working there. Um, render Doc, we want to actually revisit that as well, because um, the person that makes it has um, fixed some of the bugs that we ran into, so it'd be good for us to explore that again. It'd also be good to look at one of the bugs we were hitting, because we can totally avoid it. Um, SSAO, yes, I need to revisit that with a clear head again. Um, we got close, but there were definitely some problems that I need to <laughs> I need to dive back into and find out what they were. Um, game jam stuff I didn't get to do this year because I just didn't have time with the other with the actual game that I'm working on. Um, cutaway experiment, we might come back to that because I'm having to. Um, one of the interesting things with this, let's just bring this up a second. YouTube videos inside YouTube videos. Ugh, don't talk. Um, right, so we had this thing where we were able to make, God, it, fuck off, um, where we were able to make this cutaway shared it, and we were, we were texturing the back faces so it looked like the top surface. Now, in Unity, of course, they're doing all their shadows and everything for you, so the depth really matters. Um, and because of that, you would want to actually change the depth of the fragment, but writing to that is a bit of a bum. It um, it puts you on a slower code path because it can't do early discard and things like this. So we might have to look at a slightly different technique. And one of the ways of doing it is to discard based on the height, produce a stencil mask based on this part here, based on the top, our sliced top. And then we're gonna render a plane at the cut height with the texture on it and we're going to um, use the stencil to pick which, which fragments of those actually make it to the output buffer um, so I'm so basically this is going to be a different technique of doing the cutaway um, that might be a bit more general and um, yeah and is likely to work a bit better with uh, unity so we'll probably prototype that as well. It really, it kind of everything is dictated by how much time I get during the week to poke around with other things. Um, but yes, let's have a look at what is going on over here. Um, how are the tabs like that with an extension? Uh, like if anything looks weird in Firefox, it's probably an extension or Chrome for that matter. Um, Did I see Lisp button? No. no. Replaces chunky closing parens with that. <laughs> That's so dumb. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm with Shimera there. It looks unsanitary. Um, too many baggers. Agreed. There's too many right now. Um... Stencil masks don't anti-alias though, right? Um, yes, but we're going to be doing this. Um, be hopefully we're going to be doing this in the what they call the geometry pass or the first pass of the deferred rendering. Um, so it's really just us populating the G buffer. So it's going to be a few bars, but a few bastards, sure, <laughs> a few passes writing into the uh, into the G buffer, and then all the anti-aliasing and stuff will be happening in later ones. Um, as in no MSA. Um, I, we don't get MSAA in Unity on the, the deferred rendering path anyway. Um, so I'm just using FXAA on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, no MSA to begin with. So that's all right. Um, yeah, I think that's a lot. 
thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on chat for the last few seconds while I'm talking. And um, But yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by and we'll, uh, we will get back to this very soon. Peace.